Well, tonight on Fox 9, we begin an entire week of stories devoted to one of Minnesota's most revered animals, the black bear. And we're calling this Bear Week. Yeah, a lot of interesting stories to come. And to kick off the week, we have to jump, jump back a couple of months to the time of year when our bears were hibernating, a part of the bear's life cycle that is truly a scientific wonder. And Randy Myers joining us right now. Randy, you traveled north in late winter I to did. cover a unique research project on yeah. bears uh, that has a human health angle to it as well. It, it yeah. does. And by the way, bears are very fast. You guys learned that, right? Yeah, Thirty goodness. Miles an hour, right? Yeah, I was. Uh, photojournalist Doug Solomon and I, we traveled north with a team of scientists and got up close and personal with a hibernating black bear in the northern forests of Minnesota. It's a rare look at an animal that may hold the secrets to better medical care for humans. This is the tail end of a two-mile trek through the snow deep in Minnesota's north woods. At the other end of that beep, a black bear in full hibernation. This team of scientists, some from the DNR, others the U of M's Visible Heart Lab, are trying to unlock the mysteries of the black bear's seemingly supernatural ability to fend off physical decline during five months of zero activity and just maybe apply some of that knowledge to human medicine. Last fall, a large male GPS collared dug and tucked himself in through that barely visible entrance there. The goal today, keep the bear's stress low. The black tarp over the opening you see there helps with that. Get the Bruin out and collect as many physical and biological samples as possible. His head started inside. I think so. Is he... Something this team of Dave Garcellis, Andy Try, and Paul Izio has done countless times. They've been studying bears for years, which means getting up close and personal. Even a sleeping bear will wake up, so a dart in the shoulder ensures a safe study. So right now, uh, the bear is tranquilized. They're digging, uh, digging some of the snow away so we can get the bear out. Andy, tell us what's, uh, what's going to happen now. Sure, Randy. So what we're doing here is uh, clearing out some of the snow in front of the, the den, and uh, the bear's under full anesthesia. And so what we're going to do is uh, basically get some uh, cuffs made out of rope so we can better grab the bear. Yeah. And we're going to haul him up, up onto this uh, hill behind us, and uh, we'll start our work up right after that. And this, Andy tells me this particular bear weighs about 450 pounds, at least when it went in the den, probably a little lighter now, so which means it's kind of all hands on deck when it comes Absolutely. to getting the bear out. So that'll be the next phase of manpower and woman power um, to get this bear uh, out of the den. Cuffs in place, ropes attached, right, still going back. and then tug. Ready? Set. Here we go. <sighs> as quickly as the big male is laid out, scientists go to work. And one of the first things examined, an area on the bear's chest where last fall, a tiny medical device made by Minnesota-based Medtronic was implanted. It sends in real time back to the used heart lab and today in the field via laptops, readings on the bear's heart rate, breathing, and muscle movements. So Andy, tell me about what's uh, overall what's happening now. The heart crew right now is getting ready to download the data off of the devices, making sure everything's working right. Um, and while they're doing that, I'm making sure, or taking the temperature to make sure everything's doing well and he hasn't lost too much body temperature and is in good shape. Initial uh, sort of visual on him, he looks looks to be what? He, I mean, he looks real healthy. His, his coat's in really good shape and um, he's probably still over 400 pounds, yeah. so he hasn't lost too much weight. At 18 years old, this bear is technically an old man bear. In Minnesota, the average lifespan of a male is just three. So these scientists note everything. Blood, his beating heart, which shows up here on this laptop. Head size, even noting his aging teeth and worn away canines. But despite his advanced age, like all hibernating black bears, this sedentary state for months on end does not result in muscle atrophy. One, two, three. <clears throat> not in the heart, not in the skeletal muscles. There are no blood clots. All things humans suffer from quickly when we stop moving. If you had a patient in the intensive care unit for two to three weeks, they can be in a hypercatabolic state. They can lose 50% of their muscle mass that week, period of time. These bears aren't losing anything, mm. just body fat. So 
we're trying to see what factors they're releasing during hibernation. Right? We know that there's delta opioid agonists, there's increases in their fatty acids and bile acids, and then seeing if those could be protective for hearts, either during surgery or um, before transplantation. So you could actually treat the donor heart from the patient with sure some of these yeah. agents and then uh, have a better outcome. The mystery of how bears not just survive, but thrive in the winter den goes beyond their strong, healthy bodies. Females actually give birth and nurse their cubs all while hibernating, often in very tight quarters. I'm gonna crawl in there to give you guys a look at what an empty bear den looks like. This is obviously the den we just pulled the 450 uh, pound bear out of, so here we go. As you can see, it's not a very big hole. Just big enough for the bear to fit in. And a bear like that is huge. You can see those monitoring wires that are hanging down. And those lay in the bear's bed so that the, uh, the equipment can monitor everything about this bear from heart rate to temperature, just his well-being gets monitored throughout the winter through those cables you see in their little probes right there. All right, I'm gonna back up. Tough to imagine a bear this big in that hole. And based on the checks made oh. here today, a perfectly healthy bear. There we go. Now pushing the limits of anesthesia, it's time to get this bear safely back in his den. Nothing technical about this. Slide him down and literally stuff him back in. So this uh, big male is back in his den safely. All the readings have been taken and uh, they'll continue to monitor him for the rest of uh, the winter. He'll start to come out of hibernation now in the next few weeks. And it's at that point that he will begin roaming again. And the uh, monitoring of him will get limited at that point. But uh, they've learned a lot from this bear today. Knowledge these scientists will now take back to the University of Minnesota's Visible Heart Lab where human comparisons are being studied for potential medical advancements in patient care. As for our bear, right on cue, as the sun got higher in the sky and the snow began to melt, Mother Nature coaxed him out of his den, safe and sound. But still, under the watchful eye of a group of scientists some 200 miles away. And those scientists are now detailing all they've learned and using it to study human heart and blood health at the University of Minnesota's Visible Heart Lab. Tomorrow night, I'll take you there as we learn what the possibilities could be for better human health thanks to our Minnesota black bear. Hmm. Known about the black bear for so long around here, I never knew of this tie between the U and... Yeah, it's a project that they started a couple years back, but they have really, uh, uh, they've got volumes and volumes of information now, and they're, they're really compiling all of this. And they really believe that there is a link that they can come up with that could better provide a heart health scenario for us, mm -hmm. either in surgery or in long-term care. Yeah, it's amazing what their bodies can do. Oh, but, it's, it's crazy. But he's waking up thinking, that was a crazy yeah, dream. It was crazy. <laughs> I asked that question. I actually asked the researcher, will yeah. he sort of have... Nope, the type of anesthesia they use is a similar type they use on humans, and there's no recollection, they believe, of anything. Oh, yeah. Maybe he saw it on TV tonight, peeking through a cabin window. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Randy. Randy.